Welcome to another Quadro and VS video and in this uh, video I wanted to show you just a little bit about VMware ESXi. Right now we're logged into the vSphere client and um, uh, this allows us to interface with the server. Now what is VMware ESXi? Now you've probably heard of VMware, they're kind of the um, a known name for virtualization. Uh, even the name VM means virtual machine. Um, so VMware ESXi is basically a hypervisor. Uh, and it's an operating system, but it's not like Windows. It's basically an operating system dedicated to virtual machines. So it's you, you install it, and it's it's designed for you to run and deploy virtual machines uh, to any computer on your network or even outside of your network. So basically, you have a server. You have VMware ESXi. That server can then host, depending on the resources, several hundred virtual machines, whatever, you know, all depends on what kind of resources are available. And uh, that's basically what VM, uh, VMware ESXi is, a dedicated hypervisor. Uh, Microsoft has their version of this. It's uh, Hyper-V um, in Windows Server 2008 and uh, 2012. So um, this is kind of a good thing to uh, learn on. That's what I'm doing right now. And I'm no expert. I just want to do a short video on this. Um, basic walk around and uh, also some tips on trying to get it activated. Um, so VMware ESXi is a free, uh, uh, a free download. Uh, you get a free license and it does everything you need to do uh, even in the enterprise. Now if you want more features you can also buy a license and I don't know how much that costs but I, I think you would need to max out a couple credit cards to do it. Uh, if you're not, you know, if, you're, if this isn't for the enterprise, if this is like for personal, for home or something like that. <coughs> Um, so yeah, I'll just give you a broad stroke of the application. When you start off, you're not going to have all of this here. You're not going to have any virtual machine shown here. But if I expand, I have all my operating systems. I'm actually having a problem with um, <laughs> Ubuntu right now. I can't get it to work. But as you can see, I'm going to console into this one. And you can see I have a full-blown Windows XP installation here. Oh try to expand that here on the screen but it's not letting me the console is a little buggy I just have to say that um, the console is a little buggy um, once you get ES ESXi installed and it's fairly easy um, it's fairly straightforward the only thing you have to set really is the IP do you want it to be static do you have a DNS server in your house if, if not just leave it at default um, uh, do you you know that's really all you need to set. Uh, truly, the IP address, and anytime you're running any server, make sure it has a static IP address, and that's all you need to do. Then you download the vSphere client, and uh, you're pretty much good to go. And it's very easy to create a virtual machine. You basically just click on the uh, host machine. Uh, this is a, and then you click on a new virtual machine. And again, it's pretty much straightforward from here. Uh, you can do custom. Or typical, I recommend doing typical and then doing then customizing it later if you're starting this off. But if you do know what you're doing, more power to you. Um, let's see if we can bring up that Windows uh, client, uh, Windows console again. I don't know why it wasn't showing up. All right, let's go ahead and close that out. Let's try another one. My demonstration's failing here. Uh, we'll open the console. I just had these open. There we go. There's Windows Vista. <laughs> I'm surprised that worked. But um, as you see, the resolution's a little bit low. You can change that by installing the VMware tools. It kind of gives you gives you um, better graphics, more features, uh, more stability, and the mouse doesn't skip and lag like you usually get when you're using these operating systems. So um, yeah, fairly fairly straightforward. Um, in terms of getting it activated, uh, I had to go to Spiceworks to figure out how to do this. But if I remember properly, um, you go to your host machine, and then you go to configuration, and then you go to, I think, license features. Bear with me just a second. I'm just trying to remember all of this. I think it's advanced settings. No, that's not it. Uh, okay. Yep, there we go. License features. That was correct. And I'm going to block that key because if you guys get that key, then somebody else will use it and it's going to be bad because I only get one free license so I'll block that key but um, once you're here uh, you click on edit at the top right corner 
and here is where you can add the license key so you click on assign new key you get the little box here to punch in the key and you enter key and you just enter a key you know I'm, I don't have a, a, a key to another key to type in but this is basically how you activated it I didn't know how to get here until I you know I went to spicerix.com and found out so that's pretty cool anyway just a short demonstration on this that's all I wanted to do um, you can install something like Windows 7 and use that uh, and use VMware Workstation but Workstation costs money um, you can uh, use Oracle VirtualBox but it's very limited in its features very very limited but it's free and it works great but it's limited in its features this is a full-blown enterprise ready uh, hypervisor so um, yeah, if you want to do a hypervisor for a small business, or even your home, or you want to learn, this install this on your server. Now I, I have this. It's, now you cannot you can't install this on every computer. That's a disclaimer I want to put. You cannot install this on any computer. You're, you kind of have to check hardware compatibility list. Now the reason why this is working fine on the machine I'm running, because the machine I'm running, as you can see here, I'll bring it up in just a second. Uh, I'm using a Dell PowerEdge. I, I've got a full fledged. Uh, Dell server uh, um, running this and uh, believe it or not you can get this too it's they're really cheap they cost less than a mid-end to low-end gaming computer it actually cost me to be honest with you 161 bucks for a 16 gigabyte of RAM uh, for uh, uh, excuse me dual dual core Xeon so four core and you can upgrade the crap out of this uh, system now it's old it's not gonna run you know uh, uh, it's not going to run, you know, 12 core Xeons or anything. It'll run your quad core Xeons, but that's it. Um, it'll only handle up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, but still, it's pretty good. And the RAM is pretty cheap for the system. So, yeah, I mean, I recommend starting off something, uh, starting off on like a 1950 or a 2950, uh, or even a um, an R9. 910 I believe or not or 920 they cost about 400 500 bucks but if you kind of want the horsepower that's a really good server to start off with and buying it second hand you can e even get it cheaper so um, yeah anyway uh, just want to do a video on this and if you have any questions or comments leave them below um, I like virtual machines and I want to learn more about them and deploying them and what better way to de test this than to get the equipment yourself and try it on your own and uh, it gives you a lot of features so uh, Again, any questions or comments, put them below. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for any of my upcoming videos and tutorials.